you misclicked and you were trying to click in maybe a Dado or a My Name is Vife video and you've clicked on mine. Well, first I apologize, but um, let's be honest, you are too far from the remote anymore, so you have to deal with me now. Welcome. This is something out of the norm for myself, as if you're familiar with my content, I generally do a weekly news show called the Easy Cheapest Gaming Podcast that goes live every single Friday. Uh, but this week, I'm doing something a little different. I've dipped my toes in Destiny concept before, and I would like to do it again. Uh, this time, specifically, something that is draw the ire of many people in the Destiny community. Uh, the raid. Specifically, the contest raid. Specifically, the day one. Not really day one anymore, huh? Day two raid. 48-hour raid. 48-hour clears. Who knows? But let's talk about... Something that everyone has been talking about the last couple of days and something I think I can give a unique perspective as I think I'm considered a filthy casual to most, although I am definitely not casual by any means. But I definitely think I should give my thoughts on this specific controversy is much too strong a word because in the end, this doesn't really matter. But let's just talk about the day one raid, shall we? Root of Nightmares. Nezeract, we are tasked to go kill him. Now, of course, the raid starts very beautifully, and if you're watching on YouTube, you are watching um, actually one of my clan mates' footage I did not record. This is something I actually didn't plan on, but I actually wanted to throw my hat in the ring uh, to kind of start out this conversation that's been going on these last couple days. When discussing or at least hearing about the initial conversation around this raid, it was about, wow, this was easy or easier it, by some people's margins or um, too easy. You hear this a lot, right, from the top top players. And I always found that quite interesting. As as soon as we cleared, um, we, we did our first clear in about 19 hours, quite quite a long time especially compared to other people now a little bit of a background this is actually my personal first day one clear and i believe it's everyone that i did it with first day one clear as well uh previously i had not even made it halfway through either day one reading experience through numerous reasons that i won't bore you with right now but i wanted to discuss uh a perspective of a dirty filthy casual on how the day one rating experience went, what I think happened, and what I think maybe should change. Now let's start with the juicy bit, right? The actual difficulty, or maybe lack thereof, depending on who you're asking and talking to. Upon opening the encounter, first off, um, I, and I'm not going to say anything unique with this, but this place is beautiful. I mean, the terraformed... Witnesses Pyramid is one of the most beautiful things I think I've seen in Destiny, period. And one of the most beautiful things I've seen in, in a lot of gaming. Of course, it doesn't match with a lot of modern games that I would bring up, but it is very good in, when you bring in the scope of what Destiny does. It is a very, very beautiful experience, and I commend Bungie for doing that. And uh, the music, of course, is always great. And this is nonetheless the fact here. But, of course, with that opening encounter, uh, you are introduced to the mechanic of the raid. I think that's kind of a lot of people's issues specifically around that, right? You were kind of shown what the rest of the raid's going to be, similar to Vow, but the only difference is Vow, uh, whereas there's a lot more going on as you are tasked to remember all of these different symbols. I think there's a total of... 18 or something i don't remember the full number but uh vow is a much more intense experience uh versus the experience of this raid where uh you kind of learn the mechanic immediately and you know it for the pretty much the rest of the raid you, you are gonna shoot a light seed and you're going to make a chain of light seeds leading to the end goal being this kind of flower platform uh, and it's just an ad clear encounter, which I actually love. Ad clear. I actually love the enemy density in this first encounter. It's very uh, 
although I have the criticism of Vow being like that kind of everything's like dark and everything's pyramidy and you know, all looks kind of the same. You kind of get that same flavor here, but you at least see monuments and 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 buildings or whatever these things are. Uh, so you're at least seeing some environment inside of these buildings rather than you're just seeing this kind of flat plane where there's not really much going on aside from whatever mechanics you're doing. And it did really feel like there was a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, and I loved the... Uh, I was actually tasked with um, extending the wipe mechanic, so killing the um, Tormentors, um, which we did pretty easily because I just ran Div and completely annihilated these guys with, with of course, help from my teammates. Um, but upon doing that and, and all of my teammates figuring out the mechanics while I just kind of spent the entire time at clearing, that's kind of where I was in my element. I was actually enjoying myself quite a bit. I did still find some difficulty in it, but I I am with the overall majority of people saying this, that I remember vividly <laughs> one of my teammates saying, is contest mode on? I remember that very clearly, and it did kind of feel that way. Um, you were kind of mowing stuff down very, very quickly. Um, we all, I believe everyone was running a machine gun. So, I mean, you could really just sit there and just blow apart these guys. And if you're running a, <clears throat> particularly a void machine gun, which is like top five of all machine guns in the game, like half of them are void anyway. So you, the, the odds are you are, you're going to be generating ammo via a artifact perk the entire time so as you're getting kills you have a higher chance of generating the ammo now i know there's I I interesting things with bungie's ammo economy in t terms of how things are made i'm not going to get into that but bare bones if you're using a void weapon you're going to be getting more ammo and of course you want to be using void weapons almost the entire time because of separate artifact perks so it did make the opening counter quite easy once you figure out the mechanics it really is just execution and staying alive and that was one thing that it, it takes six repetition, and once you get it down, pack, you're good. Using supers, killing these tormentors, buying your teammates more time. You know, after a while, it it becomes easy to the point where it feels like an opening encounter. I I think that was I think the difficulty in opening is actually kind of nice on contest. I think most people probably disagree with that, but I actually enjoy that much more than <clears throat> a heavy mechanic. Uh, or a heavier mechanic like Vow, as Vow is fun after a while, but you're really just kind of running around an arena, and you're just kind of killing these dudes. After a while, it gets old, but under contest, it was much more difficult, I would say, Vow was, uh, versus this, of course. That's really all I have to say about the first guy. Let's move on to the second decision. Now, with this encounter, um... I think is a prime example, actually, of why this raid falls down for a lot of people. Specifically, as in this section, there really is only one threat, and it's the barrier champion that spawns. Uh, and that's it. In a day one setting, that thing, you're dead if you do not insta-kill that thing. You, you, you will die. And as long as you're able to do that, I think our my team cleared it in, like... I was actually reviewing the footage uh, so I can make this compilation for you guys. I think it was like three hours, something. That's, I mean, that's, we aren't, we are not the craziest of people. We actually didn't, like, again, we haven't cleared it before. Now, this is technically my, our team's first time actually together uh, on a day one raid, like fully all the way through. So that is, of course, a little different than other teams, but. Once you kind of deal with the barrier, the encounter is rather simple. And again, we're back to the, we, it's the same as the last encounter. The only difference is, oh my God, there's a dark seed this time. We got to do the same thing. But there's man cannons that shoot you back and forth. Very Halo, by the way. Uh, you can very much see the roots of Bungie's design there, especially with a specific map that Halo is known for. But the little man cannon feature in, in a <laughs> Bungie game where physics aren't the best uh was an interesting choice by bungie let's uh, let's say as when you're shooting this thing it it really is sometimes a flip of the coin if you're gonna make it uh now you can fix that of course with an eager edge sword um or if you're a hunter i feel like hunters are much much better equipped to survive these jumps warlocks uh are fine it, as long as you jump 
midway through I, I've, I was always having I wasn't having too much trouble clearing it but I was on Titan that, for that run um, but really I don't have too much to add for this encounter because it's just it really is kind of cut and dry and again I think this is kind of what starts people's ire with this raid as it, it shows oh this is just going to be the raid let's see if in and of course in a day one environment like well let's see if it gets different in, in the next encounter and it sure does I don't think it, it, it gets different um, quite enough to make people not upset, though. But uh, I was rather shocked at the... I, I, it was almost an attempt at a spectacle. It almost felt like it's meant to be more fun than it is challenging because you are really shooting across from either side. So it kind of looks like they might have adjusted enemy density because... Maybe you'll lose some reses to just the launchers. I'm not really sure. It is an interesting question that you have to ask yourself once you're making this. If you are Bungie, like, hey, we know we don't have the best physics. And I'm sure when they plus test, like they were dying or being hit the one shot or like weren't quite making the clearing. So I'm curious if they actually adjusted some variations of where they planned to have bosses spawn. And of course, the uh, shield and enemy spawn based on how their physics engine isn't really like a hundred percent right let's move on to the third kind of macrochasm now this is awesome and this is again nothing unique here everyone's gonna say this exact sentiment right macrochasm is awesome because there's plant this is there's planets above us we have to move them to like stop this white mechanic if the, if this white mechanic goes through this they this uh stigity is cr cre uh, performed and it blows you up and awesome again day one it was great i actually liked the day one experience here the only downside is the boss's health is pretty lacking um the boss's health was laughable and the i don't know how long the final stand is but i've never seen it <laughs> so like you'd think you'd at least see it one time in any shape or form like maybe a reddit clip or something uh but i have not seen anyone post anything about it so it might be like way too long because if no i've never seen it i'm pretty hardcore into destiny as in form of like social media presence it's like i, I follow a bunch of people i follow reddits and all these things i feel like i should have at least seen or heard how long it is so if i haven't i feel like it's way too long and again this is another example of ooh, my team actually just needed to be able to survive we weren't actually having trouble with damage at all um it was just us needing to live we actually got the majority of this raid done and i believe under eight hours i want to say I, I should have reviewed the footage to have the full stats for you but i want to say it was around there and Doing this specific encounter, it was really just us dying when we were moving back and forth. It wasn't really anything else killing us. It was just us moving through the boss. I don't, and the boss was booping some people for sure. So I'm sure that killed a lot of people. Some stomping, I'm sure, was happening. Uh, a couple people were unprepared for the Colossus. Of course, the Colossus can spawn like next to you and immediately stomp. So I think that got a couple people too. And if you did not, if that Colossus, I, and I don't know if anyone else has had this issue. The Colossus AI seems a bit finicky because I was able to like kind of stand in front of him and it looks like he doesn't shoot for a second or a couple seconds because I've like, I was running actually a Starfire Warlock on this encounter. I ran Titan the rest of the raid um, because I was actually worried about DPS. Lol. Um, but when I started doing this, I threw, uh, you know, I would throw the grenade. I, you know, I had an item immediately. I insta nuke this guy. But there was a couple of times where I'd stand there and I'd do all my abilities and he would never react to anything. So I don't know if his AI was a little messed up or, or if he can spawn in messed up or bugged or something. But that might have affected some of the difficulty in this encounter as well. As I felt like half the time he would just kind of spawn in and kind of look around, be a little confused. As if he's a little confused, like, oh, I wasn't told <laughs> like what the environment looks like. So I'm kind of like taking it all in just like you are, bro. Um, but of course, figuring out the mechanic for um that encounter is very cool seeing all the planets move and, and get locked in and then you look in the middle add in all these planets everything moves very beautifully together very much a spectacle encounter versus i feel like they very they had trouble figuring out like how do we make this difficult because everything spawns together i feel like in, in destiny when you have things spawning in the same exact area 
um, like together in a perfect circle, that's just begging for a grenade, and it, that just insta wipes like an entire like in, like a uh, ad group. So when, if you could do that multiple times, it it feels hard to get overwhelmed. Uh, we actually did very good with ad control. I feel like I, at no point I want to say in the day one was was I really like screaming like we gotta kill these ads. It was really the only time was when we were getting ready for DPS and we we're like, hey, let's make sure everything's clear. Um, but but um, but yeah, from the from this from my perspective on this one, I I like the encounter, but again, uh, it really is at the end of the day, hold X here and then run around and hold X at another spot. Now I say hold X, of course, on Xbox I showing my ass here a little bit but at the end of the day it wasn't too again complicated and i think of the the top players want something a little more complicated I, well, i'm going to discuss what the top players i'm gonna put that in quotes the top players want uh, a little bit later but that's all i have i think to add about this third encounter let's move on to nazarak nazarak of course jesus this man um what can I say about Nezarak? So Nezarak, the final god of pain, one of the coolest things I think I've ever heard, right? Final god of pain, it's a big deal. Big deal, right? Uh, wow, this guy uh, is not very intimidating once you start damage, but everything leading up is very intimidating as his Abyssal Cleave can just one-shot you for whatever, for just whenever. Um, hilarious. And this is really the only reason I think my team took took a while to do this because abyssal cleave is so hard to evade in any way because you have to know you're being hit then you have to know to take evasive moves then you have to know to like take cover behind something and i think my team was really struggling juggling that and all of the ads spun again so all that coupled together i think that took us out of the way it that took us longer than getting to nezarect i believe to kill Nazarak, so it took us a good bit on Nazarak, and, and it wasn't damage. Again, it wasn't damage. It was just staying alive. It was just not dying to uh, the colossus that spawned in from mid left right. It was it was not dying to random Nazarak punches. It wasn't dying to not getting refuge in time. You know, these were just random little things. It, it was not one thing. It was just the combination of all things happening. But I think added to the problem of Nazarak. Uh, Added to the problem of this raid, I think, again, comes in the form of Nezeract, as once you start damage, if you found that plate, by the way, the, the I feel like there's only one really good plate in this entire place. And if you found that plate, you found, you, like, probably cut your time in half. We were using left mid plate, I think. Yeah, for the majority of time. Yes. Um, but the perfect plate... He's actually closest to his little throne situation on the left side. It's the closest plate to his throne. So this is the throne. This is the last seed. And then this is where that plate is sitting, like right here. That plate is perfect for damage. And the quicker you figured that out, the easier the damage was. Or if you just never figured it out, the harder like your entire raid was. Because I feel like if we would have immediately figured out that, hey, this is the best place because there's virtually no cover for Nazarak to, to walk behind, then we're golden. We sit here and we just nuke this guy. Uh, we were using rockets the whole time, so we had no real problem with damage. We probably should have used Thunderlord because it really did take a while for my team to kind of get used to shooting rockets and not missing. Um, I think we were uh, a lot of my teammates were having... Uh, problems like guessing where he'd go versus like they would probably shoot where they're like oh he's right there shoot but he would do something and slightly move so they had the, i think they were having trouble just like oh he's moving to the right let's move to the right shoot there now i was using dip so i didn't have that too much of a problem like worrying about that because i was using div to aid in his teleporting so you could still shoot of course the div bubble that was on the ground and still do damage and i was I was using an auto-loading rocket with that, so I was able to help a little bit with DPS. So we're very proud of that, by the way. I was fourth on the DPS charge on the clear, so I was like, okay, I, I, you know, I wasn't, I'm not full of shit here. So I was using Thunder Crash Titan, so that that helps too. Um, to really have too too much to add. Again, the biggest problem with this one with for us was just dying to 
Nesarax fucking Abyssal Gleaves. The Abyssal Gleaves just nuked our team, like, over and over again. Like, I remember specifically two of our uh, clan mates, um, Nick and Don't, uh, just, like, that was kind of the biggest issue. Like, Abyssal Gleaves would come in the air, and then wham, and just, just insta-kill them. Like, you couldn't do anything. I think they were stacking two Void Resist and a Concussive, and it just lol, it just lulls at you, and you're dead. You're dead, fam. So... Um, that's all I have to add from our my specific day one um, outlook, let's say. Now, I'd like to add a couple remarks on the how this stands up and what might have happened. Let, let's talk about what might have happened with this specific raid. Now, I want to be clear with this. Um, I'm incredibly proud of both myself and my teammates for clearing this raid. Uh, this is not something I've ever done before, and I was very happy. I was ecstatic. Uh, I still have the clips of, of hearing everyone freak out when we kill them. It was very nice. It, it was very nice. It's going to be something I remember for a long time. Uh, because it was, very, it, was, it was very momentous when we finally were able to kill Nazarak. But, all that being said, and I'm proud of everyone who did it. No one should be ashamed. Um, and let's, let's talk about some stats before we do this. Now, I'm re recording this on the 17th of March. So the Bungie article celebrating the world's first clear has already come out. So I already have the stats. I can read them off to you. And if you watch my Easy Cheapest Gaming Podcast, then you know I love stats. So we're talking about some uh, numbers here. Total players that entered the raid. Of course, this is via Bungie. So we, this is all exact. 500,800. Sorry. 500,000. 582,428. Players that cured Cladicalism, 361,633. Players that cleared Scission, 315,036. Players that cleared Macrocosm, 249,731. Players that cleared Nezerat, 197,694. Now, add to that, unique players that cleared the full raid, i.e. players that got all four reward events. 190,459. Now, if you're confused why the players that clicked Nezerac, the unique players, why we have two different numbers for that. Unique players as in people who did not rerun the raid. Important to note, a lot of the stats that we saw prior to Bungie giving out full stats were people rerunning the raid. That's why we got that 44% uh, completion rate number. Now, the full completion rate is 33%. So, again, that's still the highest it's ever been, but that is important to note because that is, impo that is important context to have because 50, almost 50% 50 is, is insanity. But now, 33, that, that's okay. That's, that's a little more clear, especially, again, given the difficulty of this specific raid, right? This isn't Val. This isn't Last Wish. These are, th this is nothing compared to, compared to those things. Those are very hard, very deep mechanic driven rates this one is i would say almost near spectacle raid if anything but let's get into that later what are the factors that contributed to, to this maybe feeling easier than others right i know there's a lot of people like myself out there that have probably never gotten a clear and were able to do this one and again we should be very proud of ourselves but why was it this raid and i think that's I think that's I think there's numerous reasons for this specific situation, right? Why this one? And I think it's easy to say, well, it was easier, right? I think that is missing the forest for the trees and is an incredible um an incredible simplification of what actually has happened here. Uh just saying it's easier is just not enough to me. Uh there's a there's a lot of things. Um and I think it's almost, I think we can narrow it down to about four things. Of course, the, the actual mechanics, how powerful we are, are in actual mods and abilities. Everything was unlocked for us. So everyone who just signed in on Lightfall Day, if you had some prior knowledge of the game, you were given keys to the castle. You were given all the mods. You were given loadouts. You were given... I mean, there's no more affinity, so you can go crazy with all these mods. You could just equip everything, all the new frag, you know, these fragments and and all these things. 
power creep is is a word that you can use for this. Again, I think that it is is naming the problem without discussing how it is happening, right? How do you find a disease? It's figuring out the symptoms, right? Not just saying power creep and moving on. Let's discuss why are we so strong. I think that can be discussed in a bunch of ways. I think that can be discussed in the artifact mods that we got this season um, that I think is completely changed one very key factor that I don't really hear too, too, too many people talking about. And that's the anime economy. Bricks from Beyond is an insanity perk. Insane perk. When you can... F when you can tweak the ammo economy to your favor, it completely changes entire raids, entire encounters to your benefit. The animal economy in Bungie games are generally very well, or not Bungie games, sorry, in Best Destiny are very well, well thought out. But they've always tweaked them in some way. We can even look at Last of Wish for this for defeating taking combatants generate heavy ammo i don't remember the, the specific bond now but if you defeated take the combatants you generate heavy ammo that was an incredible perk back back in uh, year two and we see that here except it's free and you don't have to clear a raid to get it or clear encounters in a raid uh, you just level up an artifact and you get something that generates you heavy ammo for getting void weapon kills that's pretty insanity now it's not like it's giving out to you like it's holiday season but it's giving out way 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 too much in terms of this being the same season that a day one raid comes out i think all of that coupled with that coupled with things like the new mod system where i can stack firepower which gives me an orb of power with a void siphon which constantly gives me new um void um orbs on multi kills mixed with innervation mixed i mean we can just keep naming things that that like how insane you can strong you can make yourself uh, my void devour titan build is bonkers in this new economy Bo bonkers i'm picking up an orb i get devour i pick up a breach i get devour i i, I mean in in the if you're if you're running a tight knit team, you're getting orbs like crazy, so you can constantly just refill your health by just looking for an orb. Like Devour is still in this game, so it's, it's, you're, you are very strong when you walk into Root of Nightmares, right? Of course, uh, there's the meme of you can run a machine gun in this raid and and never take it off, and, and that's pretty true. I mean, you can really just if you just put on Thunderlord. That's all you really need. You don't really need to do anything else. Now, was this intentional? I don't know. We're skipping around a lot. And, and again, it's easy to use. Normal people to my content would know that. I love jumping around. But was this intentional? Was this meant to be kind of an easier raid? If we look back on our rating, it's been a while since we've had an easier one. Are these meant to be harder? We don't know. Bungie's never really discussed their their outlook on how difficulty should be managed in specific raid to raid releases. And I don't think they even do that. I don't think they make sit down and go, let's make a difficult raid. I think they, they figure out probably the setting. They f probably figure out like what they want to do. And they get creative and, and and talk with their team like, hey, what can we do? What What's a cool place we can do? You know. So there's a lot of collaboration. I don't think they sit down and go like, hey, let's make an easy one. Let's make a hard one. Let's make, you know, it just kind of happens probably that way uh, throughout the way of development. And important to note, again, if you watch my show, you, you know this, but Bungie, all this was made, Lightfall was made predominantly work from home. Predominantly work from home. Now, what that speaks to the quality, if that affects the quality, I'm not here to judge that currently as i'm still kind of engaging in it i would say this was i remember vividly that many people working at bungie were kind of flexing that lightfall was being made were uh being made from home from a lot of people i find that interesting as lightfall especially the campaign and now the raid is some of the most divisive content they've released in a very long time which queen was beloved by pretty much everybody i don't think many people had a bad thing to say about it really at all 
And here we are with Lightfall seeing criticisms from many people that the community base a lot of their thoughts, opinions off of, not on, off of. Um, people like Bife criticizing the actual lore, which Spongy usually nails, at least in many aspects, uh, their greater lore of their games. Criticizing their lore, we, we, we see Dado criticizing pretty much everything about uh, the campaign as well, and everything about the raid. Pretty much everyone has some opinion on the difficulty here. I mean, here, here I am right here talking to you about difficulty, so everyone wants to give their opinion on this hot-button topic, but to start summarizing my thoughts and bringing to a close everything, um, I think a lot of this stems from mechanics being very simple. Us being incredibly strong to the point where if I'm on a well warlock, I can get my super back in about 16 seconds uh, if I have something to kill with a grenade. So if I have Starfire Protocol on and I cast a well, I can make a well before the well goes away. That is, that's one person. So like we can make two other people that do that, right? It we're we're talking insanity. Controversial hold, you can do the same thing. Ashes to assets, triple stack, get a couple grenade kills. You probably have two thirds to your Nova. You can nuke something. Like it, it's it's insane how strong we are. We can get supers back so fast. Who cares about intellect, right? Fire sprites. I can't believe they put that. I mean, I can't believe they put that in the game and didn't nerf Starfire. I, I really, it really, it really baffles my mind that I can have Ember of Mercy, which um, I get Ember of Mercy and Resolve confused. I believe Mercy is solar grenade kills to heal you, and then Resolve is fire sprites give you restoration and reviving does too so <clears throat> i want those two by themselves are nuts of course adding siri to make fire sprites but those three just insanity right you're, you're on a starfire so so now the main drawback of starfire not being able to hear yourself is completely negated with one fragment i mean come on of course if you're running empress i know a lot of people are like oh Phoenix Dive, all these things, but you know what I mean. We have become so strong that we're curb stomping a lot of things. And I did hear a lot of people say, like, hey, the legend thing was harder than contest. I really don't agree. I mean, a lot of people are saying, like, the legend or uh, master, uh, uh, what's what's the strike? The new strike, Hypernet Current, I believe, is harder than, than contest. I was like, mm, no. That's that's a little hyperbolic. That's not that we're talking about two different activities. That is not true. I heard a lot of people say the legend um, exotic mission was harder than day one. Again, I think we're being a little hyperbolic. That is not true. I disagree entirely. I've done them. No, it is not. No, it is not harder. It is not. It is not easier. Uh, day one is not easier than, than all things. So people need to relax a bit. Let's keep our criticisms realistic and not. Uh, try to make our point using hyperbole as it kind of destroys all of our arguments, right? I think that's a, about everything I wanted to give my full thoughts on. The raid, although it was easier, I'm still proud of what we did. I think this actually puts us very nice to do the reprise raid that's coming out very soon. Um, if it's not Wrath, I mean, we're rioting, correct? Everyone listening to this? Are we going to just straight up riot? Because I would like to. I'd very much like to riot if 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 we if we could. Anyways, thank you everyone for for bringing bringing yourself to this specific podcast. I guess I don't know whatever you'd like to call this. Thank you for listening to me blabble on for about thirty minutes on my thoughts on this raid. I really am confused on what happened in this specific situation i don't think this was a loss really at all and by the way in terms of bungie all this negativity i'm gonna put that in quotes negativity uh is from people who are going to come back for the next expansion right now not to diminish criticisms from them right i'm not trying to do that i'm just saying from a business perspective from bungie's point of view this was the most engaged raid they have ever had in both 
metrics from Twitch and both metrics from social media. Whether that's negative or not, who cares? You still have people talking about your game and people checking out their game. Um, so at the end of the day, I don't. I, if I'm at Bungie, I'm like, yeah, no, we had some negativity, but I am of the mind. Bad press is still press. Bad press, it's still press. People are still talking about your stuff. And as long as it's not anything egregious that we don't need to bring up here, but like as long as it's nothing insanity, then it still makes sense to still be happy that people are talking about your stuff. They actually had to disable comments because people are being so gross about this. People really need to relax. I do wish, it, obviously this couldn't happen. I do wish we could have some sort of system that like, if you were <laughs> if you're going to talk shit about day one contest, uh, you had to have done it. I really feel like that. I, I, similar to how I feel about voting, where like people want to complain, like but they don't vote. I'm like, you should vote if you're going to complain. I feel like you should be able. You should if you are making Reddit posts about how easy it was in quotes. Take a picture of that emblem with your name. Take a picture of that emblem. Attach it to that Reddit post because I need. I need to. I need to verify you're not BSing me. All right. Let's be clear about that. Because uh, I do feel like we have a lot of people talking out of their ass. If I'm being frank, a lot of people are giving their opinions because they want to be cool. Uh, and uh, they did not do what we all did. I'm almost positive that probably a third, if not half, of people criticizing it did not even do it. And I very much believe that if you are to fully criticize the difficulty, you should have completed it if it was that easy. You know, you understand? What I'm saying, again, this is not to degrade anyone's comments on the raid. Everyone should have comments on whatever they're, they're doing. Just know that I might not care if I don't know you did it or not. But hey, who am I? That is my full thoughts on Roof Nightmares. Oh, oh, and I think a lot of people are getting baited, by the way. I saw people like posting, posting like, on Reddit like, oh, I like to turn my brain off during this day one contest. And people took that seriously. I think even Dado said that in his video. I'm like, dude, you got baited. No one's actually means that. No one actually seriously means they like like to turn their brain off and play day one contest mode. Please, come on. Let's be let's be serious here. Um, I will say the base difficulty of Root of Nightmares is way way too low. Way too low. Way too low. We we I hope. They, this will never this won't happen they're not gonna buff the rate it's just not gonna happen but being so po powerful already and doing root of nightmares it's like ooh, i i'm i am not really being challenged at all i can just slap on commemoration and just hold w and win so i, I wish that could be changed it's not going to but i wish it could um aside from that 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 really is all i have to add but I thank everyone who who took the time to to listen to this video. Uh, this is the first time I've ever made a full on Destiny, full on Destiny content. Really, anything I've given my thoughts and things on some things on my regularly scheduled podcast, but I've never really sat down and really discussed my thoughts on something. So, thank you so much for listening to that. Remember, you can check out my regular scheduled programming. I'm not changing anything for my uh, week to week basis. I'm still doing my podcast about the gaming news and all these things, so you can still find me there. Uh, thank you so much again. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You know the drill. Thank you so much again um, for listening. I think I'm going to actually do this on audio as well as I generally leave my YouTube videos YouTube -y, but I'm going to actually throw this on podcast services as well. So look out for all of that. Five star review, all these things. Thank you so much um, again for checking me out. And remember, go achieve. See you in the next one.